Welcome everyone to See You Tranquility. I'm your host, Pete Pardo. You have arrived at pick and day number 23 of albums that are 30 years old. In 2024, what have we been doing all month? We've been looking back on the year 1994. We've got 31 days in the month of March. Each day, a different album that's celebrating its 30th anniversary or birthday this year in 1994 across all music genres. Everything's up for grabs. So today for my uh, day number 23, pick number 23, this is the fourth studio album from this Danish band. It was released October 25th, 1994, recorded at Dallas Sound Lab Studios in Dallas, Texas. Produced by the band for Metal Blade Records. Can you guess it? I'm talking about Time by Merciful Fate. George Lemay, what do you think? I know you're a big Merciful Fate fan, as are all my Hudson Valley Squares comrades. Yeah, such a great band. You know, they, between Don't Break the Oath, their first two albums, Melissa, Don't Break the Oath, Drop Dead, Metal Classics, and then the band kind of went away for a long period of time. King Diamond decided to put together a solo band, the King Diamond Band, all sorts of albums and tours all throughout the 80s. Then in the 90s, let's put Merciful Fate back together. In the Shadows comes out as if nothing ever happened. Another killer record. And then throughout the 90s, they would release albums fairly regularly. After In the Shadows comes time. You got a bunch of them coming afterwards, right? All really, really great. And it's so funny. Uh, I say this all the time, especially in like more recent years. You know, a lot of us of a certain age grew up with Melissa and Don't Break the Oath. Those were coming out new as we were kids, teenagers, right? Um, get Just getting into all this underground metal. And they will forever be drop-dead, legendary, classic albums to all of us. And for me, they those will always be the two Merciful Fate albums that kind of reign above all. But I tell you, I was just listening to this earlier today, you go out and listen to this, or In the Shadows, or any of those other albums that came afterwards, man. If those two al first albums had never existed, we'd be claiming these were heavy metal classics. Because they're just, they're great, really great albums. I would say on this one, maybe it's sounding a little bit more modern at the time, right, 1994. Whereas those first two albums, even the third album, very much rooted in like 70s and early 80s hard rock and early metal. Uh, this little bit more of like a modern take on that but still just absolutely absolutely sensational stuff here and of course who do we got in the band at this time king diamond on vocals keyboards hank sherman and michael denner on co rhythm and lead guitars perhaps two of the most underrated and one of the greatest guitar heavy metal guitar teams of all time yes of all time these guys are so good together charlie d'angelo on bass and on drums on this album, the much traveled, he's played with everybody, Snowy Shaw. All right, so what do we have on this album? We've got the excellent opener, Nightmare by Thy Name, killer track written by Michael Denner. Then you got two really strong tracks, Angel of Light and Witch's Dance. Witch's Dance is loads of fun, lively metal songs. King Diamond's shrieking falsetto and more kind of guttural mid-range things so good and then all these riffs intricate crunchy riffs and blazing solos all over the place for me though this album really really picks up steam right around the midway point start with the mad arab right based on an hp lovecraft character off oh, the mad arab what a riff love this song so good written by michael michael i'm sorry hank sherman I was combine the two names i was gonna say michael sherman no hank sherman uh my demon crushing love it time weird eerie atmospheric gothic proggy awesome song so different the preacher totally kicks ass another hank sherman track oh what a riff in that so good then you got the awesome lady in black the Great Mirror, then Afterlife, and Castillo de Mortes, which finishes out the album in just crushing fashion. Oh, this album is so good. It's, it's always good to revisit some of the later period Merciful Fate albums because, you know, I don't have them as ingrained in my DNA as I do those first two Merciful Fate albums. So anytime I listen to these, I'm just kind of like, man, it's so good. It's so fresh because I haven't heard it as many, any of these as many times as I did those early 80s albums, right? So good. It's like discovering like a brand new favorite album. You know, but yet it's 30 years old, right? Uh, awesome. As you can imagine, uh, no charting position or hit or singles released from this particular album because this is 
basically kind of underground metal, right? This is Merciful Fate. You're not going to see this at the top of the charts. You're not going to see this going golden, platinum, unfortunately. No, nothing played on the radio. None of that stuff. George Lemie, what do you think of this album? I dig this quite a bit. So I know all my uh, Hudson Valley Squares comrades, if they're watching, also love Merciful Fate in this album. So if you know it, let us know what you think down in the comments below. Otherwise, just please list your pick for today, day number 23, down there. And we'll see you tomorrow for pick number 24. We're steamrolling right along. Not much time, about a week left right before we get to April 1st, which, of course, is going to be switching gears a bit. We're going to start talking about some of those great comeback albums of all time where those bands were left for dead, got back together, released a killer album, or at least a total shit album that everybody hated, came back with another one, and bam, they're right on track. Or maybe they lost a couple of key members and regrouped and knocked it out of the park. Whatever, it's got to be a comeback. Come back from something. Coming back from diversity. Coming back from being forgotten. Coming back from death. Coming back from major folks in the band leaving. Coming back from commercial disappointment. Whatever it might be. New record label, new lease on life, new singer, new guitar player, new drummer, new hit album, whatever. Comeback albums starting April 1st. Till then, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell to get alert of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also, down below, get the links to our ko fi page for channel donations, our merch page, and our cameo page. Thank you in advance for all your support there. We'll see you soon. We were more stuff. I P Pardo. Tune in in just a couple hours. The UK connection, of course, coming at you. Simon, Stephen, and myself up to no good once again. Till then, I P Pardo. Also ranking the albums tomorrow. Grant Arthur and I are ranking Badfinger. Tuesday is in the prog seat. Wednesday, new album review day. Of course, we've got all sorts of fun stuff with uh, new album releases. Right. Should have a few of them. Friday morning at the Fun House with Martin Popoff. Saturday, Saturday the Review Crew? I believe it is. Saturday's the Review Crew. And then Sunday, ranking the albums once again. So uh, till then, that's the next week for you. So and lots more in between. Till then, I'm Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.